So hello everyone, uh, it's Scott Hebert here from Spark Systems and it's great to be here with you today. Uh, welcome to our next Sparks Global presentation entitled Why You Need Architecture Tools. So this webinar will help you to convince executives on the business case for architecture tooling. We're going to discuss how Spark Systems and Enterprise Architect can help increase uh, business agility, lower IT implementation risks, improve team performance, and much, much more. So uh, today I'm uh, joined by uh, Wally McLaughlin and Ryan Schmier. So uh, it's great to have you both on board today. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, the members of our panel. So Wally McLaughlin is the Director of Sales at Spark Services North America. He's served in this position for more than 10 years and helps customers articulate requirements around using architecture tools, training and best practices to create business value using the Sparks platform of tools, so Enterprise Architect, ProCloud Server and ProLaborate. Uh, Wally's expertise is in developing business justifications and messaging around architecture and database applications that resonate with executive and business stakeholders and Wally is based in Denver, Colorado. So welcome Wally. And we also have uh, Ryan. So Ryan Schmier is the Director of Operations at Spark Services North America. Ryan is a recognised uh, industry thought leader in areas of digital transformation, IT strategy, service management and operations. He's an accomplished business and enterprise architect with over 20 years experience working with leaders across a diverse uh, range of business functions to translate business strategies into architectural visions and implementation roadmaps. He's a contributing author of the Open Group IT for IT Reference Architecture Industry Standard and is a speaker and writer on IT topics uh, such as transformation and emerging trends in service management, enterprise architecture and business strategy. So uh, welcome Ryan and welcome Wally and uh, my name's Scott Hebbard, I'm the Communications Manager here at Spark Systems and I'm based on the other side of the globe. So how are you Ryan? Doing great, Scott. How are you doing? I'm um, very well, thanks. And uh, looking forward to this panel discussion. Now, if uh, anybody has any questions, I'll show you how to submit questions. This is a panel discussion. So uh, myself, Ryan and Wally are going to uh, ask a few questions and going to show a few things on screen. And uh, it should be a nice, uh, fairly uh, casual discussion. They'll give you some hints and tips about how you can talk about the, um, the benefits and advantages of tooling to executives. So um, please note that audio is muted for all participants. You'll be able to type questions to the host and if we can't answer all questions live, we'll follow up offline. And you'll see a question box and simply uh, enter the text and hit send and that'll come through to uh, myself. So uh, what I'd like to do now is I'll start off with the very first question. So uh, when we say architecture tools, what do we actually mean? So Ryan, what do you mean by architecture tools and um, you know, how are they gonna be valuable to customers? Well, you know, before we get into the talk of architecture tools, um, and and I know I know that's where this conversation goes, but when it comes to to selling the need for architecture tools to executives, you can't start directly with the tools. First thing you have to do is sell the value of architecture and understanding that what's most important or important is not having the right architecture tools or the right models and pictures to hang on the wall, but instead having the right architecture and the right architecture practices and the ability to use architecture to drive change. So. So the conversation of tooling starts with what does it mean to do good architecture? You know, architecture is a practice, it's, it's, it, it's a profession, it's something that, that there's a lot of standards and best practices around. And, and architects, you know, if, if you do some of the research, are some of the highest paid professionals in the IT industry. But if you want to, get the most out of these people if you want to inspire them to do their best work you know just like any other profession they need the right tools to do it so um, you know we can jump in we can talk about architecture tools but you know 
remember that the conversation about architecture tools really has to start one step further about you know having the right architects, having the right architecture processes, and 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 then empowering those people to do the best job they can. When we do talk about architecture tools, and, and I know that's the topic of our discussion today, you know, the first thing that comes to, to mind for people is modeling tools. They think architecture is about drawing pictures, drawing models, and, and that's great. But if we're not careful, uh, the models that architects create become what I, I refer to as corporate artwork. There are nice pictures to hang on the wall, but that's about it. And that really doesn't add much value to the organization. And that's why when we talk modeling uh, architecture tools, it's not just about the tools to create the models, but it's also around curation tools and taking those models and packaging and making them consumable for business stakeholders, for executives, and for, for folks who need to use that information, those architecture insights to make decisions. And then the collaboration tools for capturing feedback, uh, doing ideation and iterating and figuring out you know, how we wanna refine our architectures, how we wanna leverage them into projects. So when we say architecture tools, we mean modeling tools, we mean curation tools, and we mean collaboration tools. You know, and, and in the architecture space, you really can't get your maximum value unless you have the entire end-to-end -end set and, and you've got the right set of capabilities to support all those functions. Um, the and other one, thing... One of uh, the advantages of Enterprise Architect is that it certainly uh, provides all of those things. It's a collaboration tool, it allows you to communicate and uh, it, uh, it certainly uh, you know, gives you all of those options. Um, it's much more than a drawing tool. Absolutely, absolutely. The other thing when it comes to architecture tools is they don't live in a vacuum. Your architecture team shouldn't be sitting off in an ivory tower someplace. They should be actively engaged with your business folks. They should be actively engaged with your ITSM folks. And in order to do that, your architecture tools can't be standalone. They need to be integrated with things like your HR database so you can see your org structures. You know, you can see how people fit into the picture. It needs to be tied into your CRM so you can see how the markets and, and the customers are segmented and how your business is operating. It needs to be tied into your finance systems to see how, how, how the financial pieces in your investments are playing into your architecture decisions. You know, enterprise insights start with enterprise visibility. So when we think about architecture tooling, it's not just about, it's not just about the architecture tools, it's about, it's about the, the tools and their connections to the rest of your organizational data. And while you're saying that, I was bringing up a, uh, some examples that show how stakeholders uh, interact in Enterprise Architect. And I was bringing up models that show um, strategy. I was bringing up TOGAF and Zachman and uh, a number of different uh, uh, diagrams that help reflect uh, what you're saying about having an integrated approach where you can see you know, databases and HR and strategy and, um, and people and how they all fit together under a single platform. You know, so here we have an organizational chart and how different organizational units fit together. So uh, that's really good. Yeah, and, and you can see here, there's a lot of rich information and insights that exist within your architecture tools. And when you're trying to sell this to executives and explain to them why you need this, just take a look at, at what Scott's sharing right now in terms of the different facets of your organization. And this is this is Zachman's orientation and his ontology around that. But just look at the surface of how much complexity we're talking about that exists in even the smallest of organizations. And it's great that you can model a single diagram in Visio or in a PowerPoint slide, but you can't capture the richness and the interdependencies that exist across most, most organizations, even if they're small. And then the other thing with Enterprise Architect is if I find you know a particular user, I can go up here and I can do traceability and I can automatically um, have traceability so I can see what that user depends on 
And if I drill down into a model, I can select an element here and I can see the traceability for this business requirement within a business process model. And I can drill all the way down to see the use cases, who it's owned by, who it transitions to. So if I make a change to a business rule, what impact that might have. Or I can select an individual such as an admin and I can see what impact that might have. Or I can drill down into uh, this um, Archimate diagram and I can see what impact that this might have on the customer and I can um, drill down and instantly see what impact changes can have. So unlike a drawing tool, everything within Enterprise Architect is connected. It's, um, it's shared and it gives you a single platform in order to communicate these ideas and to collaborate and to discuss items and, uh, and to drill down. And so, yes, I've got a, a number of different exa uh, examples here from, uh, you know, business process diagrams to, you know, the design of a um, enterprise uh, continuum. Um, but I also have a number of different um, analysis tools. So I can have a look at, you know, an organisational chart and I can quickly drill down and see what impact, um, you know, one staff member has on other members within the uh, organisation. I can look at, uh, you know, decision tree diagrams to see how decisions are made for, you know, the example on screen is for an interview process. Um, I can uh, very, uh, very quickly um, navigate and I can look at, you know, strategy maps and I can look at um, how the financial perspective and the customer perspective and the internal perspective is all modelled and all of these are linked and connected and you have a rich interconnectedness between all of these uh, different items. And then executives like also the ability to, to see documentation, to see business rules, to see what impact things will have. So, you know, within Enterprise Architect, you can produce HTML reports, you can produce, you know, um, Word reports uh, that people can see. Um, and as well as that, all of the models can be shared via the Pro Cloud server. So if and I can, yes, go ahead, Ryan. Well, and that's that curation piece, you know, because, yes. you know, Scott, you just stepped through a lot of detail, you know, of, of, of different architecture views and, and different ways of looking at the organization. But I, I've been doing this a long time. And if you try and show all that rich detail to your executives, you're going to see this glassy look in their eyes. And they're going to start thinking about what they're having for dinner or what they're doing after work today. You've lost them in the conversation. If you want to keep them engaged in the conversation, you have to take that rich content and you've got to curate it into something that's easy to navigate, easy to understand, and easy to interact with. And 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 that's that curation piece. That's part of part of what it means to do architecture is not only creating it, but getting it out there and making it usable for the people who need to leverage it to make decisions. Absolutely, and that's where. Um, Enterprise Architect has a Prolaborate that can show charts and, and graphs and that can allow you to highlight just the information that's important to the executive. So it takes all of the rich detail that I was showing before and curates it and shows people what they need when they need it. And here we have an example of a uh, Enterprise Architect model that's being delivered by the ProCloud server. Now it happens to be around, uh, you know, business analysis rules, but it could be anything. It could be architecture, it could be strategy, it could be um, systems analysis. And what you can do is you can drill down and let's say the only thing the executive wants to look at is, you know, a data flow diagram or I can click on the data flow diagram and I can have a look at an example 
And you know, here is an example that's shown on screen, a chart that curates that information and allows you to see it. Now what's great is this is being delivered via the web and it's just being viewed via a simple web browser. So what it does is it takes the power of enterprise architecture and all of that richness and allows you to curate it and send it to an executive so that they can view it on their, um, well, yeah, on this side of the world we say mobile phone, but on your side of the world you'd say cell phone, uh, cell phone or a tablet, and to be able to dive into that to see what they need when they need it, so they can, you know, look at charts and diagrams. And uh, we also have Prolaborate that does that at an even higher level, that curates that information and creates bubble charts and and heat maps and all sorts of valuable information that's. Um, useful for the uh, the executives. So Scott, before you move on from this, you know, let, let's let's put this into the executive context for a minute. You know, when would an executive use this? Well, a very common thing for executives is is, you know, they they serve the role as account managers, executive account managers for working with strategic customers. One of the things those executives hate most is when they're on a call with, you know, their CIO or or, or their key contact at the customer. And the customer says, you know what? We've been struggling, you know, with the billing thing. It hasn't been right. You know, you know, you you keep sending the bills to the wrong address, you know, or or whatever it may be. But there's a problem, you know, and and I'd like you to get this fixed because our lower level folks are are struggling and they're getting frustrated. Executives that get those kind of calls all the time, you know, that data flow diagram you were just showing. Is the kind yes. of thing that an executive could look at and and look at and say, well, wait a second, let me figure out where that address is coming from. And then they realize, oh wait, it's coming from a centralized customer profile, and they're able to see who's responsible for maintaining that and what system that's maintained in, and how they can engage support on that. So, so they're able to look at it and very quickly reach into their own organization and find the right place to engage to resolve that customer's problem. By having the architecture tools and the models in place, having it curated well in a consumable way, using something like you know, WebEA or Prolaborate, you're able to make that executive's life a lot easier and help resolve one of their key pain points. And the other advantage is that they can add comments and add notes and uh, add details right here via the web browser so that as they see the thing on screen and they say, this is important, I want my BAs or I want my developers to follow up on this and to make changes. Well, in the field, when they're talking to the customer, the, the executive can make a decision can document it, can note it here in WebEA, and it automatically gets stored in the model. So nothing's ever lost. People don't put things on the, you know, the back of a napkin and it gets thrown away and important, valuable decisions that are made in the field get lost forever, they get stored in the model. So um, it really does take that collaboration and um, the ability to interact with the information to the next level. So, one of the challenges I see, and, and I'd like to bring Wally into this conversation here in a second, um, is, is you know, when when folks come to us and and they ask for architecture tooling, often they don't they don't necessarily know what they need. You know, either they're architects and they want the right tools to do their job, or they're executives saying, uh, "Why do I need this thing? Why do I want to make an investment in it?" Um, and so. You know, we, we we often see a disconnect between what they need and what they're asking for. And Wally, you you deal with these types of situations every day. Can you tell us a little bit about you know when when a customer comes and says, "Hey, I'm looking for architecture tools. What are they asking for? And then what are what do they what do they really need?" Yeah, thanks, Ryan. So most of the time when we get people looking for an architecture tool. The idea of being able to organize and manage their data in a much more logical manner is very attractive to them. Lots of times they don't have a repository, they don't have a database, 
They're managing their data in a share file that is full of documents and that, that works on a smaller level. But once they try to scale up, it really starts to, to challenge the validity and the reliability of the data. And it's just a great deal of work to keep everything maintained. So they spend a lot of their time managing the data, but, but not getting what they need out of it. And, and the idea of, of, a, of, a, of a modeling tool and the idea of the Sparks suite of tools is, is that they're able to manage and organize their data. And, and not only that, but they're able to share what that data is telling people. And, or, or people can get the information from the data that they need and not more than they need. So you don't confuse people uh, with a great deal of information. You can give people exactly what they need. That, that graphic that Scott had up from Prolaborate is a, is a perfect example. And it is really the basis of digital transformation that we're talking about. And having a single source of truth for, for your data you're not managing your data with documentation, but you're able to create documentation and reports from the data. And from a justification perspective, that's really what we what we help help clients sell to their executive level. That we're not necessarily using the term architecture, but we're defining architecture to the executive level, if that makes sense. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense, Wally. You know, a, a lot of, of executives really don't understand what architecture is, you know, and, and maybe they don't need to. At the end of the day, they're executives. Their job is driving the business forward. They care about the business. They care about driving business change and things like that. Um, architecture is just kind of the means to get there. You know, yeah, and, and, and the, the, sorry, go ahead. No, go, go for it. Uh, so and, and so with with things like WebEA and Prolaborate, you're really able to communicate the model without having people consume it who who are not modelers. If that if, if that makes sense again, because a lot of people that need to make a decision based on what the data is telling them can't get that from a model itself. So when you're able to simplify the data, like this graphic you have here. That is incredibly helpful for people that may need to make decisions from data. And it's very easy for the individuals who are creating this graphic to put that together from the data. And this is this is a real time graphic. This is not going to be a static report that people have to update uh, every day or every every couple of hours. Uh, these these graphics, these these sites are are tied directly to the database. Yes, and we had a question uh, from you know one of the customers online that said, um, you know, uh, so Ron mentioned an executive is not going to try and decipher DFD, but that's why we have Prolaborate and we have the Pro Cloud Server because what it can do is it can bring up these dashboards and the heat maps and can show them the data that they need. So what I wanted to do was to show that there's an incredible amount of richness that can be stored and modeled within Enterprise Architect. But then we also provide the tools that make it easy to consume this information and to use it so that people can make decisions. They can decide where resources should be allocated. They can communicate, they can collaborate and do all the things that make the business work. But it's based on a solid bedrock of information and a single source of, source of truth that's stored within Enterprise Architect itself. So Scott, would it be helpful? You know, I, I know we've, we've, we've set a lot of context here in a lot of the discussion. Um, I've actually got three or four slides that I can share real quick that kind of provide an illustration of, of sort of the common questions that come up in that executive conversation. Um, would that be helpful to, to, to share I, that? I think that'd be very helpful to kind of talk about, you know, what, you know, what people actually need from an architecture platform and what some of those common questions and uh, approaches are. So uh, look, I'll hand over to you and uh, uh, look forward to hearing a little bit more. Gotcha, and, and Scott, I'm gonna actually ask you to grab the presenter thing back for a second. I've got a little technical issue I've got to resolve no here. No problems. Um, <laughs> as, as, as we go through that, my laptop screen froze. 
So uh, no problems, I've uh, got it back. So uh, yeah, some of the things that I've been showing on my side are uh, you know, uh, Enterprise Architect and a few other things. Now, I might, I've uh, just uh, muted um, uh, Ryan's details on there and uh, look what I might do is uh, just while we're waiting is I might bring up the uh, the slides from my end and uh, see if that works. So we've got a uh, architecture platform and business justification. So I'll just see if Ryan's back on the line. Can you hear me there, Ryan? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that. My technical difficulties. It happens. Uh, that's it happens. all right. That's one of the good things about uh, having a panel is there's always someone on the other end that can uh, help Fair bring time. things back to life. So I've got the screen and I might just drive it from my end. So uh, sure. that, that sounds you can good. Some points. So, so, so there's only four or five quick slides here. And, and and it really comes down to just a few questions. When you're talking to the, the executives, it's, it's a high level strategic conversation about why do you need it? So why do you need an architectural platform at all? You know, the first reason is productivity of your architects. You hire the best people you can, you pay them really, really well, but yet a lot of organizations give them substandard tools to do their job. You can't expect you know, an artist or a fine craftsman to do their best work with the wrong tools. And so, and so productivity is key, and, and, and that is probably number one. The second is scalability of your architecture practice. It's great that, that a single architect or a small team can do things in Visio and PowerPoint, but it does not scale across your organization, and it doesn't allow you to collaborate. It doesn't allow you to assimilate work that's going on across different parts of your company. Um, the third piece is agility uh, in, in a complex and changing business environment. Um, one of the biggest things that executives are talking about right now is enterprise business agility. This is, this is why they're going through digital transformation. This is why they're upgrading business systems and leveraging SaaS and the cloud and all this. It's because business environment is changing faster than ever. Well, you don't know what you need to change in order to achieve that business goal or that next business initiative, if you don't understand how things work today. And Scott shared a, a lot of the complexity that exists in most, most, um, most business and IT ecosystems. You know, architecture tools allow you to distill that complexity into something that's manageable and can be used to drive decisions. And then the last one, managing technology change safely and effectively. Biggest challenge that, that IT organizations are making is they're rushing to make changes to deliver the business capabilities quickly and they break something because they didn't understand the dependency, they didn't understand the impacts of, of, of doing something. So having architecture tools enables you to deliver faster time to value and, and lower your cost profile because you're being smart. You're changing the things that need to get changed that will have the biggest impact you know, either from a, a business or a financial perspective. So this is why you need an architecture platform. Scott, can you click to the next one? Well, the, the next question is, well, um, um, that, that, that's great, but you know, we, we've got Office, doesn't that work? You know, they say that Visio and PowerPoint and, and Excel are, are, are the tools that most, most architects are using. Yes, they are. But you need to differentiate between what is a productivity tool for individuals and what is the platform to support a company and a team? And, and that's where we talk about an architecture repository, a place that there is a single source of truth of your architecture data that everyone can share and make decisions on. Otherwise, you may end up with a bunch of little documents here and there that answers individual questions, but you can't get the true enterprise value out of that. And, uh, and I think, you know, this is something that you might want to keep uh, stay tuned for. Um, in one of the up and coming Sparks Global presentations, one of the Sparks partners is going to be drilling down on that topic of, of productivity tools versus architecture um, modeling tools and talking about that a little bit more. So, so stay tuned for that one. Um, the third, third thing is, you know, 
the value of the Sparks modeling platform. So, okay, great. I need modeling tools. Modeling tools are not the same as office tools. Got it, got it, got it. So why Sparks? Okay, well, Sparks EA is the world's leading architecture modeling platform. There's a lot of users in a lot of different industries all over the world that are using this platform. It is, it is, it is the most widely known architecture tool out there. Um, and that's because it provides the capabilities that architects need to do their jobs. And not only that, but it's a tool that most architects know how to use. And if they don't know how to use them, there's training and, and, and best practices available to help them learn it quickly. Okay. Um, Sparks provides a shared repository for governance and integration. Okay. It's the whole thing. Manage your data in one place. Stop all the duplication, replication. It just makes your life a whole lot easier. And then the collaboration tools for sharing content across the enterprise. You know, this is, these are the things that Scott was sharing. And, and when you're talking with executives, this is what's really going to, to, to resonate. Sparks isn't just the modeling platform. It's a platform for collaboration and sharing that content as well. So Scott, what, okay. Um, the other thing with Sparks and, and you know, Wally will actually probably talk about this a little bit more in a minute is um, in addition to the Sparks tooling platform, Sparks is, Sparks is, is a, a family of companies that, that offers not only the software, but also the training and the services that people need in order to leverage those platforms effectively. And so Wally and I come from Sparks Services North America, and so we are one of the services organizations that that supports the the, the Sparks implementations in in this part of the world, and there are Sparks partners in other parts of the world. The purpose of these Sparks services organizations is because it's great that you have tools, but just because you have something doesn't mean you're getting the most value out of it. And so the services organizations were created to help organizations leverage their tool investments to maximize value. And so you have not only an awesome set of software, but you also have the support of the Global Sparks community and the services organizations to help you translate the capabilities into value. Thanks, Ryan. And look, it really is. The Sparks companies around the world really facilitate services. They support localization, training, mentoring, and much, much more around all of the Spark systems tooling. And uh, we really do encourage you, if you see, like there's a couple of questions, someone says, oh, can you, can you show us ProLaborate and can you show us some examples? Well, you can go to you know, youtube.com and see some detailed videos about uh, ProLaborate reports. And we did one uh, just a couple of weeks ago, but we encourage you to reach out to Spark Systems US if, um, if they're close by or other service companies and, uh, and um, you know, get them to do a demo, show, the, show you how you can make the most out of Enterprise Architect, ProLaborate and ProCloud Server. Um, yeah, more, they, more, they might be able to even help you make that business case for why executives are going to find Enterprise Architect so powerful. And it's not just seeing ProLaborate, seeing ProCloud Server. Yeah, you know, we can show it to you. You can see it on YouTube. You can, you can see all sorts of demos of it, but it's really about talking with you and understanding what business problems you're trying to solve, what architecture problems you're trying to solve, and figuring out how to best leverage, whether it's ProLaborate or Spark CA or, 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 or content, you know, like standards that, that, that support the tools to, to get the most value out of those. So Scott, I think there's one more slide on here that kind of summarizes up sort of the, the executive conversation on here. Okay. so. So, so what's the key points? Architecture is really the method to deliver business change. You want to deliver better quality project, faster time to value, less risk of breaking stuff. That's what the executive care about. They don't care about architecture. Architecture is the means to help you deliver change. And you measure that change in terms of better outcomes, faster, safer. Okay, Sparks is the platform to help your entire organization collaborate around doing those things. And because you can collaborate 
in, in, in creating these things and driving change. You can lower your operating costs and make better IT decisions. You know, and you can see traceability between the original idea, we wanted to do this, and how it's implemented within your organization. Ah, we had this goal, and so we had we developed it as part of these three projects. Ah, and here's what it looks like when it's operating today. And so when you're talking to executives, you notice we didn't talk about detailed architecture models. We didn't talk about architecture tools here. We talk about, hey, as an executive, you want to drive change. You want to you want to engage across the organization to be more agile, to drive change faster, safer, better quality, more profitability. Architecture, enabled by architecture tools, is a way to help you achieve that. That's kind of the key business business case right there. Thanks, Ryan. Look, there's a, a number of different questions that have come in, and I'm not sure whether to direct them to yourself or Wally. So I might just, um, you know, put some your way, and uh, I'm quite happy to uh, let you uh, share or both discuss. Uh, so we've got a question from David, and it says, with such a large tool set provided by EA, how can I get buy-in across a global company? So I'll just start by saying, with 850,000 companies, um, uh, customers around the world, we have some companies that have you know, over a thousand seats, uh, right down to uh, teams of three or four people that use Enterprise Architect uh, every day. And at Spark Systems, we use Enterprise Architect for everything, for writing our code, for managing our, um, our marketing, our strategy, uh, everything. Uh, it's all done within EA and it's all shared by ProCloud Server and even organising these webinars, we use ProCloud Server <laughs> to uh, to share, uh, you know, descriptions and ideas and, and video content and uh, material as well. But uh, I was wondering if uh, you might be able to talk to, with your experience with uh, customers, how you can get um, buy-in across a global company and, and how you can sell some of the value for executives in a global company of using EA and yeah, Spark's I, I tools, can, I, I can address that. There, and there's two aspects to that. First of all, if you're if you're using Enterprise Architect, what you could do is do all you can to socialize what it is that you're doing. You know, Ryan mentioned ivory tower architecture. That that is a, an issue that architecture has had for many many years now, and with the new tools that we have, it's very easy to socialize what you're doing and make it more understandable with, uh, with the stakeholders who need to consume that data. And, and we, we've seen a lot of organizations do that. We've been working a great deal from the US with, with the European companies, with the Central European office that's, that, that's got clients that have offices here and vice versa. So from a perspective, if, you, if you're not using a tool, What Enterprise Architect, ProLaborate, and ProCloud Server can do from an operational perspective is really something that executives have already bought into from an, from an ideation perspective. They, they see the trends that are happening. They know that a lot of this digital transformation, a lot of the digital transformation efforts are going to become competitive necessities for them. And if you're not using a tool defining what your challenges and what your problems are is fairly easy. The, the, the issue becomes how do we show the executives that we can do this and not do it with a lot of light with any disruption. And, and that's what the sister companies can really help you identify and define from whether it's a demo, whether it's a proof of concept, something like that, that you can socialize and show and say, this is where we are and this is where we need to be. Yeah, so I, I'd add on to this. You know, when you talk about getting global buy-in, there's two types of buy-in that you need. One is executive buy-in. The second is, is buy-in from the architects and the people who are going to be using it every day. When you're talking about executive buy-in, the key thing is make sure that they understand that this is um, a, a platform to support the organization and, and, and to help the organization as a whole not just something that benefits architects. 
you know, it's 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 a lot of executives perceive this as okay. You know, the architects want a new toy to play with so they can draw better pictures. I I, I don't really care about you know them geeking out on better pictures. You know, I really care about business change. And if so, you, if you can draw that connection between the tools help enable business change and and the business outcomes, you know, that's how to sell it to to executives. Um, in terms of selling it to the users, this is actually the, the bigger challenge for a lot of organizations because you have a lot of architects who are being, who are under a lot of pressure to develop models, deliver architectures quicker and so they can help drive agility to support a project. You know, and they perceive use of an, uh, an enterprise platform as, as overhead. Well, you know, with those people, you know, I think we can take advantage of a common trait that I won't say all architects have, but a lot of them have, which is architects love showing their work and sharing it with others and getting recognition for the good work that they're doing. Having an enterprise platform provides a way for that architect to showcase their work and to share that work and to have others recognize that work in other parts of the organization beyond their immediate project team. So it's okay to play play against the, the architect's ego a little bit. But the key is for them to see that, hey, you know what? Yeah, it's a good tool for me to, to develop models in. Yeah, I may have to deal with some governance things, you know, to play nice in the sandbox with everybody else. But the benefit is the things that I create are going to be useful longer. They're going to get more recognition and they're going to get reused by others. And, and that's going to make the architect feel good. Thanks, Ryan. We've got a question from a Werner that says, uh, in my experience, executives are really driven by the cost value matrix. So would you be able to perhaps talk about, you know, from a cost and value perspective, what are some of the benefits of, uh, you know, Enterprise Architect and the Spark Systems platform? I think the first benefit is the scalability of Enterprise Architect. We have a lot of clients that start with a few licenses and, and grow that into many, many licenses and add the ProCloud server and add Prolaborate. So from a, from a scalable perspective, it's very easy to get started with Enterprise Architect and it's even easier to scale with, with Enterprise Architect. And what you do with the model, what we do, what you're able to do with the tool, it's got the capabilities to expand as, as far out as you want to go. So, so I think that's one of the greatest competitive advantages of Enterprise Architect is that you don't have to start with a massive project. You can, you can start at whatever level you'd like to start at. And we, we have organizations that start with 10 licenses and then we have organizations that start with, with 100. So it's, it's, it's really an approachable tool from that perspective. And it's and it's very easy to get started. Yeah, and I, I'd add to that. You know, it's it's important when you're looking at the cost benefits for you to um, for you to look at the context of that analysis. You know, are you evaluating it based upon the cost benefit for a project versus for an enterprise? You know, in the past, architecture tools have really been seen as as enablers of individuals, where you know through you know, things like Sparks and Prolaborate, we're seeing EA being come, and Sparks becoming more of a, a decision support platform. And, and what that means is it's creating greater leverage for the organization. So consider an organization that has 10 architects today, and maybe they're using office tools. Um, you know, so they're, they're creating stuff in Visio and PowerPoint and, and great, you know, throwing matrices together in Excel. You know, I've done a lot of that over the years. That's great. Your company needs to scale or your company needs to grow or you need to put this team to work on two different projects. Okay, what, what can you do? Well, you can add another architect to gain more capacity or you can give the architects that you have better tools to enable them to scale better, to cover a broader swath of your organization so they can cover multiple projects or support multiple business business units or business processes. When you look at the cost of enterprise architects and the people, finding good architects is really hard right now. 
Okay, they're expensive in the marketplace. And so if you wanna grow your architecture capability and you wanna grow your architecture capacity, it is much easier, quicker, and cost-effective to get better leverage out of the architects that you have than to try and recruit a bunch more of them. And so instead of hiring another architect, why don't you improve the productivity of the architects you have by 10 or 20%? by giving them better tools to work with. Well, if you gain 20% off of 10 people, that's the equivalent to adding two more staff. And while we can generate a proposal for you if, if you got specific examples, but using that, that back of the napkin uh, math that I got there, um, I think what you're gonna find is, you know, um, Spark CA, plus Prolaborate Pro Cloud Server, all the architecture tools you could need are going to cost you a whole heck of a lot less than bringing two more people into your organization. And you're gonna get, you're gonna actually get more productivity for, for the enterprise out of it. So when you think of cost benefit, you need to think, you need to think, you know, bigger in terms of, you know, these are tools to support the enterprise. Um, you, you also need to look at leverage. And I'm happy to add that, uh, tools like uh, Enterprise Architect are very uh, cost effective. The uh, the way they are priced is uh, designed so that you can get a copy of Enterprise Architect on uh, everybody's desk. And tools like WebEA mean that people within the organization can consume that model um, in an extremely cost effective way just using existing technology. And it's um, hard to underestimate how powerful that is that, you know, a strategic directive can be in every employee's hand um, and distributed uh, freely uh, via the web um, in a live manner. Uh, it's uh, pretty amazing. So here's, here's the other thing to consider. You know, a lot of companies already have EA. You know, they, they already have some architecture tooling in place. The best investment to get the highest ROI may actually come from uh, engagement with a services organization to help you use those tools better. You know, maybe it's some best practices or some training, or you know, one of the things we offer is a enterprise architecture health check, where we come in and we look at your processes and your tools and your configuration and everything and say, wow, you know what? Maybe you don't need different tools. Maybe you need a little bit more skill refresher for for your people or maybe we need to you know tune up your repository a little bit so you have cleaner data structures to work with you know you may be able to get that higher roi that you're looking for um you know partially with new tools but but partially out of better utilizing the tools that you have so you can get greater impact from them thanks ryan so what i might do now is i might just um start to wrap things up i a little bit and uh, just following up on Ryan's point uh, if you go to sparksystems.com uh, you've got information here for Spark Services North America and their website so there's a contact form there so uh, please feel free to reach out so if you want to do that health check or if you want more information or if you'd like to uh, engage uh, the services of Spark Services North America um, please um, get in touch and uh, they will be able to help you and they'll be able to help you build that uh, business case. So just before we wrap up, I just wanted to hand over and um, ask Wally and Ryan for one more tip about, you know, if you're talking to an executive, you know, what's one fundamental idea or concept that you put towards them about how the Spark Systems tool set, including Enterprise Architect, ProLaborate, and the ProCloud server can help them today? I, I, from my perspective, I, I think that it's improving the agility of getting business done. We've, we've got business architects, business analysts, IT developers, that all need to communicate and collaborate to, to get to the same goal of what is the motivation of the business? What are we trying to accomplish here and how quickly can we do it and how well can we do it? And this suite of tools allows you to do that in the fastest, 
it in fastest fashion that's possible. And as Ryan was saying, with, with a good architecture team, with these tools, what can be done is fairly limitless with, with enterprise organizations and, and how well it can help people communicate data across departments, across divisions, and, and help get the purpose of the business complete. And, and I would echo that and just, just add on that architecture is really an investment in your company's future. You need the right people, the right processes, the right tools, and the right partners. Um, and, and someone like Sparks can help you meet the needs that you have today, as well as deliver the capabilities that your business needs for the future. Fantastic. So uh, just to wrap up, uh, as per usual, if you have any questions, please send them through to webinar at sparksystems.com. Uh, if you look at the uh, Spark Systems YouTube site, there are a number of different webinars that are available that we've done in the past month. And uh, you can look at uh, examples of Enterprise Architect 15. You can see examples of reporting in ProLaborate. You can look at uh, integration because we've had a few questions about uh, integration and how that works. And uh, um, once again, I'd like to thank Ryan and Wally for their time today. Uh, it's been great to get uh, such a uh, unique and valuable perspective. And we uh, hope that this has uh, helped people out there that are trying to make decisions about tooling and to understand some of the benefits. So uh, any Thanks. final words, Ryan and Molly? Yeah, one final word, and that is, you know, this Sparks Global webinar series, you know, we, we're happy to do this. However, the whole reason we're doing this is to provide the content that you're looking for. So if you're listening to it, it live, you know, provide provide your feedback in the polls and 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 the questions in the thing. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know, Scott just shared the the webinars at sparksystems.com email address. Send us your feedback. What do you like? What resonated with you? And what would you like to see on a future topic? You know, we're happy to to develop you know, the content and, and the stuff that, that you need. Um, but, but part of that is dependent on you letting us know what topics you want to hear next. So, um, Scott, thanks for having us on here today. Um, and yeah, and thanks for very much. Watch, for those of you watching on YouTube, take a look at the info section down below for contact information for both um, the future webinar series as well as uh, info on EA15 and contact details for Spark Services North America. Thank you very much and uh, thanks for joining us all today. It's been fantastic. Uh, have a great week and uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.